Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to speak with you about passing your next semi-truck inspection. Now before we get started I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers, consisting of leased on owner operators and carriers operating under their own MC authorities, running under our truck dispatch services. As always guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you guys provided on all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming. And let's talk about these, uh, uh, semi-truck inspections. Passing your semi-truck inspection is very important. If uh, you've ever been pulled over, you know that it can feel a little bit tedious and uh, it's always an inconvenience. But, uh, you know, if you haven't been to one, you will be pulled over by a DOT officer. And it's very important that you have everything in order. Now, what I did is I took a bunch of notes again, make sure that we can get through this. Uh, pre-trip inspections are going to be your biggest uh, savior. Yeah, basically, as long as you do a really good pre-trip inspection, which you should be doing every time you know you hit the road, you're probably going to be just fine because you're going to catch anything uh, that is wrong. And you know you always want to stay on top of that because you know your safety is paramount. And pre-trip inspections are going to help you catch any sort of problems that are out there on uh, you know in your truck. Now, one of the things that uh, that the DOT officer said was that you want to have all your documentation in order. Uh, their pet peeve pretty much for all of them has been use folders. For some reason, uh, truckers out there, they don't want to use folders. Just have it all bunched up and say, here, officer, take this uh, stack of 50 sheets of paper and, uh, you know, dig through it and find what you want. So that's a big, big pet peeve. You know, it's a simple thing. You can provide that and that gets your foot, uh, you know, basically you start off on, uh, on the right foot with the DOT officer. Um, are there things that they're looking for to pull you over? Apparently there are uh, headlights and pig lights. Okay, mainly lighting issues. If you got an issue with a uh, with a headlight, they're gonna pull you in. If you got issues with pig lights, uh, your brake lights are out. Your you know the lights around the trailer are out there, or there's something missing. They're going to pull you over, and then it goes from there. Now blitzes. As far as blitzes, uh, they always focus on something specific. Uh, the federal government specifies the focus each time there is one, and uh, and one of the things that specifies the focus is our increases in violations. So if there's an increase in violations in brakes, for example, your next blitz is probably going to be about brakes, and that's kind of how they decide what to focus on. Now, blitzes are usually happening on interstates. Very rarely do you find them on off-road or, or, or off-highway conditions on small streets, things like that. So if you're on a highway, that's probably where you're going to find the blitzes. They concentrate for about three to four hours a pop yeah, per area, and they call the saturation. So what they'll do is they'll saturate one area, and that's where they're going to pull over the most uh, truck drivers. Now, it's three to four hours, so you might be one of the lucky guys where you're constantly running behind the, the cops, and so they're... You know, they're constantly ahead, you pass them. They're constantly ahead, you pass them. You might get through a blitz and never get pulled over once. Now, as far as uh, notification, the FMCSA does notify in advance when they're going to do it, with, during which, uh, the, you know, dates and what they're going to be focusing on. And what they're asking is that, guys, one of the problems that they keep running into is that truckers do not secure their fire extinguishers. Make sure they're not bouncing around the place. It's pretty simple. Secure your fire extinguisher. Make sure it's charged. Make sure your fire extinguisher is charged. If you used it last time, get a new one. Otherwise, you're going to get written up for it. And the other thing they said, that attitude is a huge part of passing your, uh, you know, your semi-truck inspection. And uh, that'll get you, get you a long, long way with the DOT officer. Make sure you're in a positive attitude. We know it's a, an inconvenience. You know, we know that you're going to a shipper or receiver. You're, you know, you're always on a tight schedule. They, they know that. And uh, you know, being aggressive with them or having a bad attitude is not going to get you anywhere. Like most things, uh, like you know, most things in life, right? Now, documents and lights are the most common violations. So we keep coming back to this. Have your documents in order. Make sure all your lights are taken care of. Headlights, pig lights, what, uh, whatever other lighting issues. That seems to be a big issue. Officers, they what they normally do is they'll take the information, they'll get your uh, you know your ICC number, they'll run you through safer, and they'll look for repeats. If you got pulled over in the past, you didn't get it taken care of, and they see a repeat, 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 you're getting written up for it. So if you got pulled over and the cop let you go, they give you a warning, go get it taken care of right away. Don't leave it for the next day. Now I want to cover the six levels of uh, 
of inspections. You got your level one, which is the most common level of DOT inspection. You got your, uh, and that's the most thorough one. Now, uh, level two is gonna be driver and vehicle inspection. It's basically a walk around of your equipment and uh, the, the cop will never, the DOT officer, uh, does not get under your, uh, your truck or your trailer uh, during such an inspection. Level three is gonna be a driver only where they're gonna check again, driver credentials and documentation. Have your documents in order. Make sure to use folders. Now, now level four is gonna be a special inspection. It's literally called a special inspection. It's a one-time check of a specific item. So for example, brakes, tires, lighting, whatever it may be. Level five is gonna be a vehicle inspection. Uh, this is uh, basically the same thing as a level one, or it comes from a level one when it comes to your vehicle. It, the driver is never present at these inspections, okay? And finally, you have your level six inspection, which is an enhanced NOS or NAS uh, inspection for radioactive shipments. If you don't deal with radioactive shipments, you got nothing to worry about. So, quickly wanna run through some of these. Uh, I wanna just look through level one in depth, level three, and level five. Level one inspections are gonna be a complete check of both the driver and the vehicle. They're gonna be looking at your license, medical certificates, logs, hours of service documentation, inspection reports, and hazmat endorsements. There's gonna be a complete check of the vehicle, cargo being securely fastened, seat belts, brakes, suspension, tires, windshield wipers, headlamps, turn signals, steering wheel, and fuel system. Very, very comprehensive. Take a look at all those items, make sure you're in good shape. Level three is gonna be your driver's license, endorsements, medical cards, skills performance evaluation certificate, your rods, hazmat requirements, vehicle inspection reports, and your hours of service documentation. Finally, level five is gonna be your brakes, fuel, cargo, exhaust, steering, lighting, suspension, tires, steering wheel, trailer, windshield wipers, emergency exits, engine, and battery. So guys, just take care of your equipment, make sure you have all your documentation in order, make sure your lights are in good shape, your fire extinguishers are in good shape, and you have a good attitude next time you get pulled over, and everything will be just fine. Now I'm gonna switch over to camera, we're gonna look over the loads we book for our customers, and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back guys, let's take a look at some of these loads. We're gonna start off with a vented van. For those of you who own your equipment and you have a dry van, please consider uh, venting your equipment. You're gonna meet or beat reefer uh, rates. You're not gonna have the kind of maintenance on it that you have on a reefer, not the kind of insurance coverages, and you're gonna, in certain seasons, gonna make a ton of money. Uh, we have a vented van guy, he's always doing an amazing job, and venting your van is very inexpensive, a great way to go, and as long as you're using quality vents that can seal very, very well, you're never gonna have any problems with shippers or receivers, and you're gonna make more money. So a vented van coming out, uh, out of uh, Webster, Florida, this is a one pick, four dropper going to Greer, South Carolina, Pineville, North Carolina, Stanley, North Carolina, and Louisville, North Carolina. This is a 37,000 pound load of nurseries. This is exclusive to a vented van. All the loads were palletized, no touch to the driver, delivered to small nursery uh, shops, 30, 40 minutes per drop. Excellent job, 764 miles booked at 1950, got them 255 per mile. And as a reminder, 255 mile coming out of Florida. Next, Rural Hall, North Carolina, going to Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. 40,000 pound load of palletized paper. 352 miles booked at 1475, got them 419 a mile. Then Martinsburg, West Virginia, going to Saratoga Springs, North uh, New York. 20,000 pound load of big paper rolls. That's 420 miles booked at 1650, got them 393 a mile. Then Canosta, uh, Can Canastota, New York, going to Crothersville, Indiana. 42,000 pound load of wires. It required some blocking and bracing on this load. Originally booked at 2,800 bucks plus a $200 detention for the receiver uh, detaining the driver for six hours. Ended up running 686 miles booked at three grand. Got him 437 a mile. And finally, Bloomington, Indiana, finished off the week going to Prior Lake, Minnesota, an excellent area to finish off. 12,000 pound load of windows, very light, only 10 pallets on this one. Uh, 659 miles booked at two grand, got them 303 a mile. And this driver ended up running only Wednesday to Wednesday, and, but grossing $10,075, running 2,881 loaded miles plus 292 miles of deadhead, 350 per loaded mile, 317 with deadhead included. An excellent gross for a dry van, especially starting in Florida and ending up in the Midwest where he's gonna do an amazing job next week. Next, we have a reefer coming out of Aurora, Illinois, going to Evansburg, Pennsylvania. This is 11.3 on the way, load of food at 60 degrees, 565 miles booked at 2,500 bucks, that's 4.42 a mile. Then North uh, Char Charleroi, Pennsylvania, going to Gas City, Indiana. 26,000 pound load of dairy products, Walmart delivery, 347 miles booked at a 13.50, that's 7.20 per mile. Then Bolingbrook, Illinois, going to Seymour, Indiana, 15,000 pound load of candies. Originally, this was booked at 1,500 bucks, then we got them 4.60 375 in detention 
Unfortunately, this driver really got detained. Eight hours at the shipper, eight and a half hours at the, at the receiver. It's a Walmart delivery. Things do happen. Very light load though, with 259 miles and booked at 1963.75 in total. That's 758 per mile. Then Scottsville, Kentucky, going to Allentown, PA, 28,000 pound load of chilled groceries, 777 miles booked at three grand. That's 386 miles. Finally, uh, East Greenville, Pennsylvania to Fort Wayne, Indiana. 13,000 pound load of food at uh, 60 degrees. It was a late pick, late delivery. Booked at 1,500 bucks. Got a, an, an additional toner from the last canceled load at 250 bucks for a truck order not used. Ended up running 598 miles booked at 1750. That got them 293 a mile. Finished off their reefer run Tuesday to Tuesday. $10,563.75 in gross. Ended up running at 415 per loaded mile average, running 2,546 loaded miles, uh, 546, 547 deadhead miles at an average of 342 with deadhead included. And all the loads had to be under uh, 38,000 pounds because this driver has a custom built truck and cannot carry more than that. We were able to accomplish that ran over 2,500 miles, grossed over $10,500 at 415 per mile uh, loaded and uh, did an excellent job. Next reefers, Crawfordsville, Indiana, going to Salem, Virginia. This is a reefer running a 35,000 pound load of chilled groceries. It's a Kroger delivery, going to Salem, Virginia, 530 miles, booked at 2250, got them four and a quarter. Then Mount Crawford, Virginia, going to Lancaster, New York, 40,000 pound load of coffee creamer. That's 404 miles, booked at 1800 bucks, got them 446 a mile. Then right out of Lancaster, New York, zero deadhead, going to Abington, Virginia. Light load at 15,000 pounds of strawberry glaze, 60 degrees on a reefer, 581 miles booked at two grand, got them 344 a mile. Then Hendersonville, North Carolina to Selling Brook, Selling Grove, Pennsylvania, 10,000 pound load of leafy greens, 588 miles booked at two grand, got 340 per mile. Then uh, Harris, uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, going to William, uh, Wilmington, Massachusetts. 6,000 pound load of, of uh, fresh salad, 390 miles booked at two grand, got them 513 a mile. And finished off with Londonbury, North, uh, New Hampshire, going to Pocomoke City, Maryland. That's a 28,000 pound load of frozen seafood at negative 10. Cisco delivery, 501 miles, booked at 1,500 bucks, got them 299 a mile and uh, they ended up doing a great job very light loads as you can see some of you know 15 grand 15k 10 6 very light loads front ran friday to friday gross eleven thousand five hundred fifty dollars uh run three uh dollars 86 uh 386 per loaded mile running 2994 loaded miles plus 362 deadhead miles that's 344 with deadhead included a great average one of the most hardworking drivers that we have all the loads uh, you know, were basically done on recap hours. So very important that you learn how to run recaps. If you don't know, you can get that information by Googling, uh, Googling the information, right? Now, as far as uh, this driver, he's something else. Uh, as soon as this 10 hour break is over, he's back behind the wheel and driving. Doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the night and uh, he gets behind the wheel, gets out there. Because of that, he ended up running almost 3000 miles. Ended up grossing 11,550 uh, 11, in his reefer with a great, great average of almost four bucks a mile. Uh, next, we have another reefer coming out of Fremont, Nebraska, going to Trotwood, Ohio. This is a 35,000 pound load of frozen pork, booked at 2,400 bucks originally, plus there was uh, quite a bit of uh, detention. It was 13 and a half hours of detention at the receiver, ended up paying 35 bucks an hour for all the hours for a total of $472.50. Ended up running 741 miles, booked at 28.72 and 50 cents, got them 388 per mile. Then Anderson, Indiana, going to New Albany, Mississippi, 41,000 pound load of frozen food. It was a Nestle pick, Walmart, delivery 545 miles booked at 2675 that's 491 a mile then west point mississippi going to columbus ohio this is a 40,000 pound load of frozen chicken 641 miles booked at 2800 bucks got a 437 a mile and they finished off with canton ohio going uh with a one pick three dropper to huntsville alabama birmingham alabama and uh montgomery alabama this is a 41 three load of milk 24 seven pickup, three drops to local stores. The only truck delivering there, just a few pallets per drop, very fast, you know, 30 to 45 minutes per drop on the unload. 811 miles booked at 2,600 bucks. That got on 321 a mile. Finished off with a Monday to Monday run. Gross $10,947.50 with an exactly $4 per mile average. Uh, loaded, that's 2,737 miles ran plus 347 uh, deadhead miles, which got him down to 355 with deadhead included. An excellent rate considering with all the deadhead and everything. Now, this is a really, really good gross, right? Uh, great attitude on the driver. 
and the absolutely trusted dispatcher, which is what we ask each and every one of you guys uh, to do. Trust your dispatcher. They have all the information. They have their skill set. They have the experience. They're going to get you the best rates, but you got to trust you guys. Now, we're going to finish off with a regular uh, dry van. This is a team coming out of uh, Albany, Georgia, going with a one pick, two dropper to uh, Cooksville, uh, Cookville, Tennessee, and Nashville, Tennessee. This was a beer load. 472 miles booked at 2300 that got them 487 a mile then lebanon tennessee going to grand prairie texas 38,000 pound load of paper products 707 on the miles 2300 dollars booked that's three and a quarter then bedford texas going to flint michigan 43.5 on a weight of non-hazmat chemicals and totes 1182 miles booked at 3500 dollars 296 per mile and then of course wyandette michigan they finished off going to johnstown uh new york this was a 42.5 on the weight, also non-hazmat chemicals and totes, but this time 587 miles booked at $3,000, which got them 511 per mile. Now, these guys only ran uh, for four days of driving. They ran from Monday and afternoon to Friday morning and uh, ended up basically grossing $11,100 in four days of driving, 377 per loaded mile, ended up, uh, in, you know, starting off in the south, but ended up in the Midwest, ending up... Uh, running to the midwest and ended up in upstate new york so an excellent excellent uh market i always talk to you guys about going to new york don't be afraid not all of new york is like manhattan uh, and uh, obviously a very good rate for this driver great average in just four days of running and like i say guys if you're not making this kind of money and and it doesn't matter if you're uh you know if you got your own mc authority if you got company drivers maybe you're an owner operator or at least on another outfit out there uh it's okay we work with all, you know all those situations so if you got your own mc or you don't have your own mc call or text us at 801-448-6363 we'll send you more information we'll get in touch with you go on our website and uh you know basically there's going to be a chat box you'll see that kind of scrolling through the uh through the bottom of your screen go to our website any of the web pages at aftdispatch.com or aftdispatch.com forward slash go for more information fill that out uh you can fill out the form select if you got a mc or you don't and we'll get you guys going uh most importantly stay healthy be wealthy take care